Welcome to the Video Zone. Uh, I'm here on the set of Prehysteria 3, which is subtitled Dino Putt. Uh, this picture will be out early next year on the Moonbeam label. In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed Arcade. Um, the picture really took a long time to finish. It was actually done about three years ago, and I was so unhappy with the computer-generated effects that we threw them all out and began again and really created a brand new look uh, for, the, uh, for the scenes that take place in Arcade. Uh, you've got the video zone to watch now. This deals with the behind the scenes of Arcade and coming attractions and all sorts of news on Full Moon. And I'll of course see you on the next edition of the video zone. My tree. Deposit your money and the game begins. Ah! Who knows where it will take you? It's a trip through the world of virtual reality, courtesy of Full Moon Entertainment's latest release, Arcade. Veteran director Albert Pune returns to Full Moon with Arcade as a unique new medium for terror. Right. Well, when Charlie first uh, approached me with the um, title, Arcade, and that he wanted to do a horror film set in an uh, arcade situation. Um, I had been reading some articles about virtual reality and thought it was an interesting uh, framework for uh, a horror film to take place in. This new technology includes the player as an active participant in the game, and the player's experiences and personality dictate which way the game will proceed. What? I saw you watching me. I think what's interesting about the game is that the, each level has a different aspect in terms of how it works on, on uh, Megan's personality, her character's personality. So I think each of the levels have their own sort of, um, you know, fascinating uh, facet to it. Step into the vortex. Megan Ward portrays the troubled youth Alex, who is struggling with her inner demons while trying to save her friends. What's nice about Arcade is that Alex is the unexpected hero. It's the last person you would think to save the day because she's got a lot of problems, but she has to also save all her friends from this vicious monster, this machine that's, that's taking over. My favorite thing about being a hero is that I get the applause at the end. No. <laughs> okay, that's uh, print and uh, wrap. Yeah. Even heroes need help sometimes. Two players, Nick. And Alex gets some from her friend Nick, played by Peter Billingsley. I'm talking public relations nightmare here, pal. Virgin sacrifices, Satanism, the whole bit. Off camera, Megan and Peter found time for some fun. Are you feel me? See, he just got wounded by the screamer. This is what the screamer can do. What's the screamer? The screamer is what chases us in the game. It's the thing that comes out if you spend too much time on this. It's level. like fate, you know. It's like time what? catching up with you. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Rounding off the cast are a few more familiar faces sucked in by Arcade. A.J. Langer, Seth Green, and Brandon Rain. We will take you beyond the boundaries of... Reality. Reality will Reality never be the will same. Never be the, same. <laughs> True. the favorite level, the level with the boat scene, when I get to just come out and tell Alex everything I think of her. I wish I could kick her butt, but in the end, she gets me. <laughs> she and saves I don't your get life, it, man. But, but she does save my life. I'm going to turn it off. No! Get out of my house! Oh, Arcade will rule the world. <laughs> there is no escape. <laughs> Oh, stop, it's too intense. <laughs> when we said reality will never be the same, we weren't kidding. Each player must wear several accessories to enter the world of arcade. These are the cyber gloves, and this is what enables you to actually touch the virtual reality. This is your headpiece, this is what you look into, and um, these are our joysticks. To, so we can maneuver. Ah! Ah! This is our escape button when things get hot and heavy. We just hope that the escape button works. Once inside the arcade world, 
The special effects magic takes over. An action. An oversized blue screen was created to give the illusion that the player was completely enveloped in the computer world and a special camera was used to film the sequences. This machine here is called a, a power pod and it's a, uh, a remote control head that uh, maneuvers the camera uh, detached from uh, the head. So I am uh, operating the camera in the luxury of uh, these wheels oh, yeah. here. Pan and tilt here. And I have a monitor. I don't know if you can see this as my viewfinder. So it's pretty neat. I can orient these uh, any way I want. The power pod allowed us to make uh, quite a few kind of radical camera moves uh, very easily. And it could just float over the uh, stage and allow, it, allow the camera to get into a lot of positions that normally we couldn't in a, in a conventional way. Once the blue screen footage is shot, the blue background behind the actors is electronically removed and replaced with new images created by the computer animation company DHD. So what we see now is a, a blue screen shoot where the actors and some props are shot over a blue background and by using the blue background and some technical device we can get rid of the blue background and put some nice computer graphics and blend the actors in their environment. So every time you've got a new camera, camera angle, you have to have the same look, but different look in the background, different angle. Creating the backgrounds is just a small fraction of the elements involved in the computer graphics. Many of the on-screen devices were created solely in the computer. Typically, uh, we'll get sketches from a client an art director, or we'll come up, we'll be asked to come up with some sketches ourselves. Typically, it'll be one or two or three views. Once it's been approved, we go into the computer and we start modeling. This is not drawing, has nothing to do with drawing. It's actually con doing 3D construct from either spheres or from many different tools that we have, or polygons, triangles, whatever, and they're placed together. Once yeah. we get to that stage, uh, we've done some flipbook tests, which are low resolution picture files, moving the camera around to make sure it looks quite uh, interesting uh, or deep, close to what the client wants. Uh, we'll start playing in with material of the object, what colors it is, uh, whether it's shiny or how shiny it is, specularity and highlights, uh, textures, bump mapping, a reflection mapping, ray tracing. After the flipbook tests, the graphic designers move on to more detailed rough versions. And what we see now is not the final point of view, it's just a working tool. So with this, we're going to decide where our cameras are going to be, uh, virtual cameras, and how the cuts are going to work. It's right before the final rendering. Okay. At this time, all the texture are there. Uh, the light, light, sources, yeah, the light sources, yeah. everything is there. The motion, uh, the speed, everything is there. Just before final rendering, we'll we use this and no make sure, yeah. All this is brought together to create the final dazzling effects that encompass arcade. My, my soul. Got my free life. <laughs> the special effects may be the most spectacular part of arcade, but it was the human element that brought it all together. Yeah, we're just becoming one big happy family. Happy so. family. One of the great things in the film is, is uh, the scenes with the kids and their rapport. And uh, I think that we improvise a lot of their scenes. And I think that audiences will come away with that being probably their, their best, their fondest memory of the film. See ya. Peace. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Arcade. Kiss reality goodbye. I came to Full Moon because the music supervisor, Pat Siciliano, gave me a call to, do, to work on a film, the Robot War soundtrack. And I had known Pat for about 10 years when I was doing rock and roll music. He was at a different record company and we just kept in contact throughout the years. I've wanted to do film scores since I was a kid, so I've been studying them and paying attention to how film uh, related to the music or how music related to the action on the screen for a lot of years. Mandroid, um, Jack Erskard directed that and I had a little more 
uh, I don't know if it was freedom or not, but um, because I had done another score, uh, I worked on, it's a very kind of dark film, so I, I worked on different things to sometimes make it lighter, and it seemed more like a elements of old universal horror movies to me. I got a feeling like, that. I don't know if Jack did, but uh, with, a, with a robot who's controlled like through virtual reality and things at all, in a laboratory, the kind of mad scientist guy character um, was, was interesting to try to illustrate with a, a dark theme, like a Danny Elfman type thing. Invisible, which is a sequel to Mandroid, um, follows the characters on another sort of adventure and then the mad scientist guy is still in there. So I'll continue some of the motifs that I've established in Invisible, but I'll, there are new elements, there's new character development, so all that will have uh, brand new music and uh, it won't be quite as dark as, in, as uh, Mandroid was. It's, it's hard to know what, what fans of my other music will think of when they start seeing film scores from me because it's, it is kind of a different way to compose and hopefully they'll go out and see the films and then it'll make more sense because uh, the records as themselves are quite different from my other recordings but it's still me and there's still my whatever I bring to music there's a thread there so hopefully they'll, they'll enjoy them as well. Benjamin Knight was an ordinary man until a battle for the ultimate machine turned him into something more than human. Benjamin Knight's come back. Imagine what an army of invisible men could do. Now, with abilities beyond sight. And an ally of circuitry and steel. Steal the machine! Benjamin Knight is going to make his enemies see red. Invisible, coming soon from Full Moon Entertainment. An innocent in a spell of evil. Seduced by a vampire. We together now until the end of time. Who will stop <laughs> at nothing. You must learn to survive. To possess. You promised you would teach me everything. His prey. Read out with your senses. Body. <gasps> and soul. Take him. <laughs> They're vampires, Mel. Vampires, Marin. Now, uh, to save her sister. You're so cold. You're dead. A woman will enter a world beyond her worst nightmares. Let there be a bloodbath. There is no love between
between the living and the dead. Bloodlust, subspecies three. Jack Death has made the future safe for humanity. Feel tough. Lady, I am tough. He's back. Hunting through history for a new breed of trancer. Jack! Jack, you all right? He's gone! Where is he? We've lost telemetry. He could be anywhere. Something tells me I'm not in Kansas. Swell. He's in a dimension of terror. A trancer. Who's made I am? I'm nobody's meat. I'm Jack Death, and you're coming with me. Uh. This man can put an end to our nightmare. We must find him. I will capture this fool's head. Trapped by his worst enemies. There's no way out of this place. Now, Jack Death will find his destiny. I'd follow a man like that into the gates of hell. On a world in need of a hero. Well, anything to save mine. You're knocking a death door, and I got the goddamn key. Trancers 4, Jack of Swords. In a hotel on Bodega Bay, a team of scientists will discover a secret. Beyond their imagination. For the moment, the secret of my magic and my puppets is safe. Maybe that's the formula Toulon wrote about. A power that a demon is showtime. <clears throat> will kill to possess. The magic that gives my puppets life was stolen from a tribe of ancient Egyptian sorcerers who pledged their allegiance to the demon Lord Sutek. What Tulan stole from me, we must recover. Now, their only hope lies in Andre Tulan's deadliest puppet. I'm with you, Puppet Master. Puppet Master 4, the birth of Decapitron. So I'm not an athlete, but I am Denise Duff, and you may remember me from Subspecies 2, Bloodstone. I play Michelle, the fledgling vampire. Rent it if you haven't seen it. So I'm here on the set of Pre-Hysteria 3, Ooga Booga. We have this thing, he and I. So anyway, I'm here to tell you about Full Moon's new fun stuff. They always have fun stuff. I love that. So I'm wearing a very cool t-shirt. Of course, I sort of personalized it. This t-shirt is Puppet Master 4 great colors. They're also available in Trancers for the soon-to-be-released Bloodlust, Subspecies 3, and after every full moon film, you can get a t-shirt from it. That's so great. And also, 
you can get a t-shirt when you become a member of Full Moon's fan club. And that t-shirt's got a Full Moon logo on the back with that big blue moon that we've all come to know and love. 20 bucks, lifetime fee, that's it. One time, and we have your soul for life. Wow, it's kind of devastating, isn't it? So you can become a member, and what you'll get is a quarterly subscription to our newspaper called Moon Flash. And in that, you'll get to hear all the latest workings of the upcoming films, and you'll know about everything before everyone else is, before I know. And we'll throw in a surprise every now and then. So subscribe, because we want to hear from you guys, all right? I got to work on my game. <sighs> all right, Unga Bunga, what are you going to do about this? We got hot, hot new CDs from Full Moon's very own Moonstone Records, including Quiet Riot's Terrified <laughs> and David Arkenstone's score to Robot Wars. And we also have Full Moon's very own main title, Madness. Madness. And you know what that has? It has all of the themes to Full Moon Pictures, all right? So go out and rock on, guys. We also have original posters available with artwork from all of our Full Moon pictures, just like on display at your video store. And don't forget our trading cards, you can get those too. And we also have limited edition model kits with characters from the Puppet Master series, including Six Shooter and Blade. Ooh, he scares me. For more information on how to order Full Moon merchandise and become a fan club member, you can call us at the Full Moon Hotline at 1-800-999-9559. Or you can write to us at Full Moon Entertainment, P.O. Box 526, 8721 Santa Monica Boulevard, West Hollywood, California, 90069. Well, it looks like I'm out of popcorn. I'm going to go fill up, and I'll see you guys at the next video zone. Bye!